Nafumi Iwatani is just another Otaku College student from Japan who doesn't like going out, doesn't have many friends, and spends most of his time reading light novels. One day, while browsing through a light novel, he is summoned into a different world, along with three other guys. When he comes back to consciousness, he finds himself surrounded by a group of cloaked men, who start calling them heroes. He notices that he has a shield attached to his arm, which he can't move, and the hooded man calls him the shield hero. The others are Motoyasu, the spear hero, Ren, the sword hero, and Itsuki, the bow hero. They are escorted in front of the king who greets them, but now Fumi notices that the king is acting very coldly towards him. The next day, a bunch of adventurers are called from the kingdom and given the choice of joining the hero's party. Surprisingly enough, none of the adventurers join Naofumi's party, which is a problem because he is a shield hero, meaning he has close to no offensive capabilities. One girl named Mine, who previously joined Motoyasu's party, volunteers to join Naofumi's party. Naofumi is instantly charmed by the girl and sets out on their first day of adventure. They go to a nearby meadow, where they kill a bunch of really low-level balloon monsters and sell them in the town shop. Mine takes him to a weapons shop, but when he tries to hold a sword, the shield rejects it. She convinces him to buy himself a light chainmail, and she herself buys really expensive armor, mentioning that this way she can be safer and more effective in killing monsters. He gives in to her charm and they go to a tavern to celebrate. After having dinner, he goes back to sleep, happily dreaming about the upcoming days, totally oblivious to the hardships he's going to face the next day. The next day when he wakes up, he's horrified to find that every single equipment, gear and money of his is stolen, apart from his shield. He rushes outside and is confronted by a bunch of guards who take him to the king. He spots mine already present in the court and tells her that they got robbed and whether anything of hers got robbed, to which she hides behind Motoyasu. The king shouts at him to stay quiet. Mine told everyone that in the night he drunkenly came into her room and tried to molest her, tearing her clothes away, and she ran outside of the room scared, bumping into Motoyasu, who saved her. Nafumi is totally shocked, he looks at her unbelievably, and tells everyone that he went straight to bed that night, but none of the other heroes are willing to believe that. He also notices that Motoyasu is wearing the light chainmail he bought himself yesterday and realizes it was all part of Mine's plan all along. He gets frustrated and asks the king to be sent back home. But the king responds by saying that they can only go home, once they defeat all the waves. He pushes the guards away and walks out of the palace with nothing but a drab cloth to wear and his shield by his side. The news about his crime is spread throughout the kingdom, making every single person despise him. He goes into the forest and kills the balloon monsters all night, returning to the town shop to sell them. He then goes to a tavern and while eating he is gained upon by a group of thugs that attack him. He is able to easily defeat them with the help of the balloon monsters still stuck to his body, but later gets frustrated at the lack of his offensive capabilities. A short man notices this from the corner and introduces himself as a slave trader. Now Fumi goes inside his tent to have a look at the slaves because the trader tells him that the slaves are bound by a spell and can't betray or lie to their masters. Now Fumi looks through the slaves and chooses a sickly little girl named Graftalia, as she is the only one he can afford. He takes her with him the next day, gets her a small sword from the weapon shop, and urges her to kill one of the balloon monsters that he has been carrying. At first she is scared and hesitant, but when he orders her, she gets hurt by the slave's crest and decides to stab the monster, killing it. Later, he takes her to a tavern and feeds her, which surprises her as she had never been treated to food as a slave. She quickly bonds with him and begins to excel at killing monsters. They then move to another town, where they venture into a mine to earn some money, mining the minerals there, but are attacked by a two-headed dog monster. Raftalia is terrified because this is the kind of monster that destroyed her village and killed her parents. Now Fuma defends her and orders her to attack the monster, but when he notices how traumatized she is, he tells her to run away while he distracts the monster. She gets shaken up by this statement and runs up to the monster, stabbing him in the neck. The monster throws her away and tries to attack her, but he summons a shield in front of her, protecting her, and then she takes a leap and stabs the monster in the chest, killing him. A week has passed and Rathalia has grown quite a bit and she has gotten very good at killing monsters. She takes Nafumi back to the weapons shop to get him some armor, as he keeps getting hurt while trying to protect her. She gets herself a sword and barbarian armor, and then they visit the dragon Harglass, which shows the time remaining for the next wave to come. He realizes that the wave will be here before the next day and turns to leave, but bumps into all three other heroes. He ignores them and keeps moving, but Motoyasu holds Raftale's hand and tells her to leave Nafumi. She refuses, at which point he asks whether she has heard the rumors about Nafumi. This enrages Nafumi and he grabs her and moves away. That night, she asks him about what happened between all the heroes, which he refuses to answer. 
The next day, the wave arrives and the heroes are teleported to their respective locations. He notices that the village of Loot where he fought the Dodd monster hasn't been evacuated, so he runs to that area. He distracts all the monsters and tells her to help the villagers evacuate. He is able to defend every single villager and then climbs a bell tower, ringing the bells loudly to attract the monsters. He then lights the tower ablaze and jumps off, killing a lot of monsters at once. Some of the villagers get inspired by him and decide to fight. A big monster comes forward to attack one of the villagers, but Nafumi is able to defend him and Raftalia rushes in, killing the monster in one blow. Suddenly, he sees a bright flare in the sky and fire starts raining on them. He covers Raftalia and hears the royal knights coming into the village. They set the flare out and mocked him for staying in a village while the other heroes were together. Suddenly, the knights are attacked by a bunch of big monsters, but Nafumi defends them. The leader of the knights tells them to leave this village so they can assist the other heroes, but some of the knights refuse, getting inspired by the shield hero and deciding to fight. Soon, they are able to kill all the monsters, and the wave gets over. Nafumi attends the celebration at the palace with Raftalia, only so he can get his reward and get out. Motoyasu approaches Nafumi and suddenly challenges him to a duel, telling him that if he loses, he will have to free the poor slave Raftalia, who, according to Motoyasu, has been brainwashed. Nafumi refuses at first, but Raftalia is captured by the guards at the palace. The king orders Nafumi to duel with Motoyasu, knowing well that without Raftalia, he can only ever defend against Motoyasu's attacks. The duel starts, and Motoyasu runs in with a thrust of his spear, which Nafumi is able to deflect very easily. He falls back and comes in with a barrage of spear thrusts, which Nafumi is able to deflect, but one of the thrusts hits him on the shoulder. They disengage, and this time, Nafumi runs towards Motoyasu, dodging his spear and punching him in the torso with a balloon monster. He then uses his strike shield to hit Motoyasu, throwing him away, and then uses his shield prison on him, releasing the balloon monsters inside. He tells Motoyasu to admit defeat and releases him from prison. He is thrown away by a magic spell aimed at him, just as everyone thought he had won. Motoyasu takes advantage of this and uses his lightning spear on him, defeating him. Everyone cheers for him, but Nafumi gets up and tells him that the duel was null, because mine interfered by using her magic on him. Motoyasu refuses to believe it, and the king also refuses to acknowledge this. They take Raftalia and remove her slave crest, removing her from Nafumi's party. He goes into despair and falls to his feet, cursing the day he arrived in this world. Ren and Itsuki walk up to Motoyasu and confirm that the duel was not fair, because mine interfered, but Motoyasu is still in denial. Raftalia slaps Motoyasu and tries to talk to her and runs up to Naofumi, hugging him and telling him that she is never going to leave him alone, which removes the curse of vengeance from him and fills his heart with warmth. Naofumi visits the slave trader again because Raftalia wants the slave crest back. While there, he spots a bunch of eggs, which are revealed to be monster eggs. He is one of the monster eggs, so Raftalia can help while fighting. The next day, the egg hatches and a small, plump bird emerges from it. This bird is called a philolial, is very fast, and is used for carriages. Within two days, the philolial grows to its full size and Nafuma names it Philo. While they are staying at the village of Loot, the spear hero's party arrives as he has been given lordship of this village and he puts extremely high toll taxes on the village. Nafuma defends the village, but he is then challenged to a race. He rides Philo while Motoyasu rides his dragon and once the race begins, Philo quickly gains an advantage, but the royal knights hiding in the jungle use magic to create pits, slow down Philo, and even hasten up the dragon. But despite this, Naofumi wins the race, saving the village from taxes. Philo suddenly transforms into an even bigger and plumper bird, which is never really seen by anyone. The villagers give him a carriage as a reward and a trader's pass that protects him from paying toll taxes. That night, they make a campfire in the woods and go to sleep, but the next day when he wakes up, he is surprised to see a young naked girl lying on his lap with wings on her back. Nafumi takes Philo and Raftalia to a dressmaker because every time Philo transforms, she ends up destroying her clothes. The dressmaker tells them that they need a special magical gemstone to weave the thread, which the magic shop doesn't have at the moment. They get out of the town and use their carriage as transportation for a wealthy trader. Their road gets blocked by a group of bandits who are swiftly dealt with by Raftalia and Philo. They bind the bandits and then loot all their stolen money from them. The trader admires Nafumi and rewards him with his knowledge and connections for saving his life. He learns a lot about trading and is even given the location of the magic thread gemstone. He goes to the temple where the gemstone is with his party and the witch from the magic shop and is confronted by a monster. This monster seems to be blind but has incredible hearing. He uses his shield to deflect his attacks while Raftalia and Philo both try to attack the monster but it is able to dodge the attacks easily. 
Now Fume then transforms his shield into a megaphone-like device and tells Philo to shout into it as loudly as possible. The extra sensitivity to the sound results in the monster's eardrums getting damaged and he loses his hearing ability. After then, it is smooth sailing as Raftalia uses her sword to slash through its body and Philo kicks the monster in the head, crushing its skull. They are then able to collect the gemstone and return back to the town, spinning a thread out of it that the dressmaker uses to create a magical dress for Philo. Now Fumi gets the news that one of the villages has been afflicted by some plague, so he makes his way there to sell his medicines. When he arrives in the village, he realizes that the situation is much worse and that he can only cure the symptoms and not the actual disease. He is informed by the doctors that it all started when the sword hero killed the dragon that used to live in the mountains. A week later, the corpse started rotting and releasing poison, which is the root of this plague. Now Fumi takes Philo and Raftalia up the mountain to deal with the rotting corpse, but as soon as they approach the seemingly dead dragon, it starts moving again and transforms into a zombie. Philo jumped up and started attacking it, even when Now Fumi told her to back off. He tried to help, but the dragon used his poisoned breath to keep him at bay. Philo jumped up from a cliff and tried to attack the dragon again, but got devoured in the process. Now Fumi dropped his knees in disbelief. He raised Philo from the egg, and now she was dead. His rage returned, and it started consuming him, transforming his shield into a rage shield. He started approaching the dragon with hatred in his eyes, wanting nothing more than to kill everything that ever dared defy him. Before his hatred could consume him, though, he was snapped back by Raftalia, who held him when he was trying to go near the dragon, getting burned all over her body and collapsing. Now Fumi tries to heal her, but her healing magic isn't enough, and with the dragon attacking him, it looks like the end for them, but suddenly the dragon collapses and Philo emerges from its stomach. She explains that the dragon swallowed her, but while she was trying to break her way out of its stomach, she spotted a shiny crystal and ate it, resulting in the dragon's death. While making his way to the capital in order to get some holy water to cure Raftalia, he spots a young girl surrounded by a bunch of Philolios. The Philolios ran away as soon as they saw him and now Fumi realizes by looking at the girl that she is not a village girl, she is from a noble family. The young girl introduces herself as Melty, who is instantly taken by Philo and runs up to her, striking up a conversation. Philo seems to be happy, so he allows her to play with Melty. Melty informs him that she was going to the capital, but got separated from her guards when she started playing with the Philolials, and she asks if she can accompany them to the capital. Now Fumi agrees, and the next day they arrive at the capital. Philo accompanies Melty to drop her off at her place, while Raftalia and now Fumi go to the church to acquire the holy water. While coming back from the church, Nafumi is suddenly attacked by Motoyasu. He falls back and asks why he is attacking him, to which Motoyasu replies that he wants Nafumi to free the blonde little slave girl that he has acquired. Nafumi scoffs at him, and Motoyasu attacks him again with a spear, destroying the nearby stalls. Mine arrives at the scene and has her guards surround Nafumi, so that Motoyasu can attack him, but before he could do anything, Melty arrives at the scene and orders the guards to lower their swords. It turns out that Melty is the second princess and next in line for the throne and mine is actually the first princess, and her real name is Malti. Melty orders the guards to move away and takes Nafumi to the weapons shop, telling him that she wants his help, but he refuses to listen to or believe anything that a royal is saying at this point and decides to move out. Nafumi refuses to help Melty and instead goes to the church to get a class upgrade for the three of them. When he reaches the dragon Harglass, the nuns there ask for a price of 15 gold coins from him, but when he is even ready to pay the exorbitant price, the chief nun straight up refuses to upgrade Raftalia's class, because it's an order from the king to not help the shield hero's party. He leaves the church and heads over to the slave trader, asking him to do a class upgrade, but he informs him that only a church can do a class upgrade and urges him to travel to other kingdoms to get a class upgrade if he is being refused one here. While there, he gets a new weapon for Philo, which are metal talons, and goes to his sewer to complete a task given by the slave trader. Philo tests out her new talons on the monsters underground and is very happy with it. A bunch of knights that fought alongside Nafumi during the first wave show up, requesting to join his party, which he accepts on the condition that they pay him 150 silver each. When they are able to bring the money, regardless of the fact that most are poor, he asks them to use that money to buy themselves some good equipment and adds them to his party, getting ready for the fight against the second wave. The wave starts and Nafumi is teleported near a village alongside his party. He spots some soldiers having difficulty with a lizard monster, so he defends him while Philo and Raftalia deal with the monster without a hitch. He is surprised at the overwhelming number of monsters this time and is informed about their spawning position, which is located on a ship. He hops on Philo's back and reaches the ship where he spots Ren and Motoyasu already fighting two different monsters. 
They are unable to kill either of them because they are fighting at two different positions, which Nafumi notices and rebukes them about. He tells Raftalia to use her light magic, which casted bright sunlight in the surrounding area and the actual monsters, in the form of shadows, are revealed to be controlling the monsters that Ren and Motoyasu were fighting. Both the shadows are killed by Raftalia and Ren, which results in the main boss being revealed to be a dimensional soul eater. The soul eater starts hurling energy blasts at them, which Nafumi is able to shield himself and both of his party members from whereas the rest of Motoyasu and Ren's party injured. Philo attacks the monster and does a very little amount of damage while constantly trying to dodge its attacks. Now Fumi realizes that they can't win this way, so he uses his rage shield once again. But this time it gets taken over by the zombie dragon shield, thanks to the crystal from the dead dragon that his shield absorbed. He gets covered in a plate of black armor, and starts seething with rage, moving towards the monster. Philo, who also has a piece of the crystal from the zombie dragon inside her, goes into rage mode and begins attacking the monster ruthlessly. Again, he starts losing control of his mind, but Raftalia comes to the rescue, helping him get control of his mind back. He starts attacking the monsters in tandem with all three of the other heroes, and is successful in capturing the monster in his shield prison, then lining the walls of the prison with spikes. To finish the monster off, he summons an Iron Maiden, which encloses the monster, killing it. Both Nafumi and Philo collapse from exhaustion, but before they could relax, another Soul Eater starts emerging from the ground, but is instantly killed by an unknown woman who jumps on the ship. She introduces herself as Glass and tells them that she is the actual boss of this wave. She mocks the heroes for being weak and says that the only one who is even slightly strong is the shield hero, enraging the others who attack her in tandem only for their attacks to get completely blocked. She then uses fans to attack all of them at once, defeating all of them in one attack. Now Fumi is impressed with her strength and instantly uses one of his more powerful abilities, the shield prison. This ability, which was able to easily trap even Motoyasu, was easily destroyed by Glass within a second. Raftalia tries to attack her, but is easily deflected and then Glass uses her wind magic to attack her, which in turn is blocked by Nafumi. He then uses his serpent shield and attacks her with poison, but it has no effect on her again. Philo tries to use her quick attack, but surprisingly enough every single one of her kicks is completely blocked. Raftalia tries to use the distraction to her advantage and attacks her from behind, but her attacks are again blocked and her sword is snapped into two pieces. Glass uses her special ability Wind of the Four Seasons again, and to protect his party, Nafumi uses a defensive shield prison, but her attacks are so strong they still weaken both Philo and Raftalia. When all seems lost, he uses his rage shield, which affects Philo as well, who attacks her, but her attack is again blocked and Glass hits Philo with her fan, injuring her. Nafumi runs at her and uses the flaming shield to set her ablaze, but it has no effect on her. She uses one of her strongest range abilities, shooting a projectile at him, which he tries to block with his shield but still gets injured, Glass commands his defensive capabilities and asks him to use his most powerful attack to try and defeat her. In a last-ditch effort, he uses his shield prison, following with an Iron Maiden. But as soon as the Iron Maiden closes, she breaks it completely, landing back on the deck unscathed. She starts preparing for another attack, but before she could do so, Nafumi told Raftalia to use her light magic to blind her. After she is blinded by the bright light, he quickly picks up Raftalia and Philo, and jumps off the ship, riding on Philo's back. She tries to attack him one last time, but he defends himself again, and because the time of the wave ends, Glass is forced to leave this world. Now Fumi visits the village to inspect the damage done, when he is called upon by one of the knights who inform him that he is summoned by the king. He is forced to go to the palace, where the king asks him about his newfound powers. Now Fumi, still angry at the king, asks him to kneel down in front of him and beg for the information, only then will he reveal the secret, which of course enrages the king, who orders the guards to seize Now Fumi. But at this point, he is so strong that all the guards are afraid of him and let him leave the palace. He sets out on another journey to visit a kingdom where demi-humans are treated equally as humans to get a class upgrade, but on the way he is stopped by an entourage of knights, along with Melty. She approaches Naofumi and begs him to return to the palace and mend his relationship with the king, as if this keeps happening, their kingdom will soon be destroyed. Naofumi refuses her plea and is about to turn around, when he notices one of the guards running up to Melty with her sword drawn. He quickly pushes her aside and blocks the attack with his shield, realizing that this is an assassination attempt on Melty, orchestrated by her older sister Malti. He pushes the soldier away, but the soldier immediately starts shouting that Nafumi has taken poor Princess Melty as his captive and orders the other soldiers to attack him. A bunch of soldiers rush towards him for an attack, but Raftalia and Philo are ready for the defense. Raftalia stops one of the soldiers blocking his attack before kicking him away and then quickly hitting another soldier. 
Philo, on the other hand, simply jumps up in the air and transforms into her fatty bird form, and crushes three soldiers beneath her. A bunch of soldiers are able to bypass them and attack Naofumi, who uses his shield to defend against their attack before Philo and Raftalia deal with the rest of the soldiers, kicking them away. The soldiers get up with a smirk, and start shouting for help before running away, while Naofumi stops Philo from chasing them. It turns out, however, that the king knows about the power of propaganda, and uses the footage they recorded from the fight scene and deepfakes it to make it look like Nafumi is a bad guy, who, alongside his companions, took Melty hostage and killed the soldiers as well. This footage starts circulating all over the country, and soon every single person develops a deep-rooted hatred towards the Shiwa hero. Raftalia goes to a small town and notices that they are announcing about the crimes committed by the S.H.I.E.L.D. hero even Nafumi witnesses the posters about them plastered all over the sea walls firsthand. He returns back to their camp inside of the forest, where he takes out a metal pin that he took from a captured soldier, who refused to tell him anything. Raftalia replies that the pin belongs to the church, who prays to the spear, bow, and the sword hero, except for the S.H.I.E.L.D. hero, as they hate him. He still doesn't understand how the church is involved and straight up turns his anger towards the king, telling Melty that just because of his idiot father, they are in so much trouble for no reason. Melty tries to defend her father, but is beaten brutally by facts and logic given by Naofumi. She tells him that her sister must be behind it, as she wants to become the queen of the country. Even though she is second in line, but Naofumi points out that even if she was the one who wanted to kill her, the soldiers are still directly under the king's control, so there is definitely some involvement here. Melty just looks at the ground and tells him that he should speak to the king once again, and that he is a genuine man who will listen to his pleas and will prove to the others that the shield hero is not a bad person. Nafumi, however, rejects her notion and goes towards the edge to look at the area before coming back and asking her about her plans from here. She replies that she plans to go back to the kingdom and talk to her father and make him understand the truth, but Nafumi tells her that it is an incredibly stupid idea and she will only get herself killed before she even crosses a single mile. He tells her that she could tag along with them if she wants to, and that way he can keep her safe. Melty ends up agreeing and he tells everyone to get some sleep as they will be leaving early next morning. They leave their wagon in the woods as it would invite unnecessary attention and start moving on foot through rugged terrain, sliding past the enemies before finally coming to a rocky area, where now Fumi finds a good vantage point in a cave, where they can rest in comfortably. He tells everyone to get inside and to get some rest while they can. By the time the night falls, Metley asks Naofumi why he hates her father, and he replies that he hates him because he has been a jerk to him ever since he came to this world. He explains everything he had to go through because of the king and Malti, which makes Melty apologize from their behalf and promises that her mother, the queen, and the actual ruler of this country will make everything right for him. He, however, doesn't say anything in return and tells everyone to get up as they need to be on the move again. They start moving as the guards look for them in the night, forcing them to hide behind rocks and walk very carefully. They end up being forced to walk on a ledge, and while walking, Melty ends up slipping on one of the rocks and nearly falls off if it wasn't for Nafumi who grabs her hand at the last moment, saving her life. This, however, ends up alerting the guards about their position, and they are forced to run away, while the guards follow them on their horsebacks towards the end of the cliff. They reach a dead end, however, and are forced to turn around and face the enemy forces, who come out into the open. It turns out that all three of the heroes have also been assembled to capture him, as the bow hero walks forward and commands Nafumi to release the princess at once. Nafumi, however, points out that he hasn't captured her in the first place, so he can't release her either. Melty steps forward and tells the other heroes that she is not taken hostage by the shield hero, and she is with him of her own accord. Both the sword and the bow hero seem to be taken aback and start questioning themselves, whether they are on the right side, but before they can say anything, Malti appears from behind and shows how much of a bitch she is, by screaming that Naofumi has taken control of Melty's brain, and that's why she is saying such random nonsense. The spear hero immediately agrees with her, claiming that even Raftalia and Philo must be under a brainwashing spell, even though all three of the girls refuse these allegations, telling them that they are not under any spell. Ren, the sword hero, asks Nafumi whether he has any proof that the girls are not under his control before telling him to hand over Melty. Nafumi looks at him as Ren tells him that they are going to have a proper investigation to figure out whether these allegations are real or not, and for a moment Nafumi even considers handing Melty over to Ren. But then Melty grabs his coax and tells him silently that if he hands him over, Malty will probably kill her and blame some sort of accident for it. Ren again demands Nafumi to hand Melty over, but Nafumi steps in front of her and tells Ren that he is not going to hand her over as he doesn't trust Malty at all. 
He looks at Malti and claims that she is trying to kill her younger sister, so she can usurp the throne for herself, and he can't let someone as shitty as her to be the ruler of such a pretty looking place. With that, Philip transforms into her fat bird self, before carrying her comrades on her back and running through the guards before jumping in the air with the help of Nafuma's air shields. The spear hero, however, seems to be ready for something like this, and throws a magical shackle at Philo, which attaches to her leg and she transforms back into her human self, making all of them fall back on the ground. Malti walks over the cliff and sends a purple flare in the sky, calling for more backup while the spear hero grabs Philo, telling her that he will release her from Nafuma's magic, so she can live with him instead. Melty, however, gets mad, and charges a powerful water blast before sending it towards the spear hero, missing him by a hair's margin and telling him that if he doesn't leave Philo alone, the next blast will not miss. Malti gets mad at this and fires a fire blast at her, which is blocked by Naofumi while Ren and the bow hero looks at her in horror, telling her to stop, otherwise she will injure her sister. However, she snarls at them that she was the one who attacked first and drinks a magic potion, boosting her magic energy, and starts blasting Naofumi with a bunch of fireball attacks. He defends against all of them before telling Melty to step back and activates his raise shield, getting covered in red angry flames, shocking everyone else, while Malti orders the Royal Knights to shoot arrows at him. However, the arrows have absolutely no effect on him, as they simply get burnt to crisp before ever reaching him. Malti starts charging up for a massive fire blast, but Raftalia appears behind her and stabs her with an astral sword, nullifying her magic. Philo is also able to free herself and punches the spear hero away as the guards run down the cliff towards Nafumi, even though both Ren and the bow hero order them to stand down. Nafum, however, blasts all of them away and breaks the narrow stone bridge, creating a gap between them. He then looks at Ren and tosses him the metal pin of the church that he got from a soldier and tells him to investigate about it, before running away from there. They rest in the forest, where Nafumi uses his magic to remove the shackle placed on Philo. Suddenly, however, Raftalia grabs her sword, as he feels someone's presence but Melty stops her as a woman dressed in black appears near them. Melty tells them that the woman is the part of a spy group which her mother, the queen, controls and they are friends. The spy woman tells Nafume that he has been instructed to meet with the queen as soon as possible, before she disappears without a single word. Nafume grabs the map again and starts planning their future journey. Before they can even plan properly, however, they are forced to move out of the forest as Malti the huge bitch has blasted the entire forest with fire arrows and magically created forest fire to smoke Nafume and his party out. They immediately run outside of the forest, while trying to stay on the path so as to not get lost. The next day, Nafumi goes inside a small town wearing a cloak and gets some information out of a street vendor, while buying some supplies for the way. He learns that Malti has pinned the blame of creating the entire forest fire on Nafumi, and has authorized a nationwide search for him and his associates. He thanks him and moves on his way and meets the girls outside the town in a nearby forest, where they decide what to do next. Nafumi claims that all of their ways have been completely blocked off and no way is easier, so they should just go to the queen and hope for the best. They move through forests and finally arrive in a different region where they find a bunch of demi-humans farming on the agricultural lands. Melty claims that their kingdom is still very discriminatory towards demi-humans, and if this region is allowing the demi-humans to farm, then it must be one of her friends, who is an excellent lord, who treats everyone the same. Raftali gets uneasy at the talk of racism and informs Melty that even her village was invaded by a fat lord, who killed everyone he didn't need and enslaved all of the rest for his own benefit. Melty feels awful and apologizes for being in the royal family, and not doing anything about it, when suddenly they hear the sound of a stranger behind them. Nafumi immediately turns around completely alert and spots a tall nerd with glasses on who tells them that even he is against racism. Before Nafumi could say anything however, he greets Melty and welcomes her to his region. It turns out that this nerd is the lord of this region, and a very good friend of Melty. He takes them all inside of his mansion, where he explains that the rumors are claiming that the shield hero is the one responsible for the forest fire, but Nafumi immediately replies by saying that all of this is a ploy by Malti. The nerd seems to be understanding, however, and claims that even he had a similar thought process. He also tells them that he heard about Melty being on the run, so he put out extra guards just in case she wandered through this area. Melty thanks him once again for his hospitality before he brings out a bunch of food for them as they looked famished. The food seems to be excellent, which excites Philo, who starts jumping up and down, asking Nafumi whether she can start eating, but he tells her to stop, claiming that he doesn't believe the nerd yet. The nerd, however, simply smiles and walks up to Nafumi, picking up a piece of food and eating it in front of him, telling him that the food is not poisoned. 
Finally, they all start eating and enjoy a hearty meal that they haven't gotten in quite some days now. Philo tells Naofuman that she wants to live here forever, but he tells her that they can't stay here and will have to leave the very next morning. Melty looks at him and tells him that at least they can rest for a couple of days, but he replies that every single day that they are here brings them more at risk of being found by the enemies. She looks at him with a frown and tells him that she just wanted to rest for a couple of days, but Naofuman seems to be firm in his decision. Later in the evening, they all go to bed and Naofuman seems to be watching outside of the window. Melty tells him to get some rest as well, but he refuses the offer, telling her that he needs to stand watch during the night to make sure nothing weird happens. Raftalia, however, walks over to him and tells him to get some rest, while she takes the first watch and he ends up agreeing and goes over to his bed, while Philo and Melty go out to explore the surrounding area. Later at night, Nafumi gets up to take the watch, but Melty tells him to relax as she is not sleepy anyways, so she will keep the watch. Nafumi, however, gets up and tells her to rest a bit, and starts watching outside the window when he realizes that Raftalia seems to be having a terrible dream about her childhood and how they were captured. Suddenly, however, he notices that something is happening outside and looks over to find out that the nerd Lord has been captured and is being escorted to a carriage by a bunch of soldiers. He wakes Raftalia up and tells her to get ready when suddenly a maid bursts into their room, telling them that the Lord has been arrested on the suspicion of hiding the shield hero and that they have to escape from the area as soon as possible. They start running through the hallways trying to find Philo and Melty, while the maid escorts them to a kitchen and hides them in a closet before pretending to wash dishes. The soldiers immediately burst in and grab her, asking her where the shield hero is. Thankfully though, Melty arrives just in the nick of time and tells them to unhand the poor maid and introduces herself as the princess of the kingdom. The guards immediately stop when suddenly a fatty lord enters the room and greets her, claiming that he was worried for her safely. As soon as Raftalia saw the fatty lord, she became extremely tense and was about to reach for her sword before Nafumi grabbed her and told her not to do anything stupid. Melty tells the fat lord that he needs to retract all of his troops from this mansion at once because the shield hero isn't here. She claims that the shield hero left her here and ran away because he knew the soldiers were coming behind him, and she tells the fatty that she wants him to take her to the king so that she can talk to him about this matter. The fat lord bows down and tells her that she should come back to his place and then they will leave for the kingdom the very next day. With this, she is escorted out of the kitchen, saving both Nafumi and Raftalia. Later, when all the soldiers went away, they came out of the closet and started looking for Philo but couldn't find her no matter how much they screamed. They start getting scared when Nafumi decides that this is enough and screams on top of his lungs for Philo, commanding her to show herself right this instant. They suddenly hear a loud screaming sound and finally find Philo hidden in the attic, rolling on the floor because of the pain. Nafumi asks her why she wasn't showing herself, and she replies that Melty told her to hide in the attic and not to come out, no matter who calls her name. Nafumi is glad that she is alright and he informs Philo about what happened to Melty. She is extremely upset and wants to go and save Melty right that instant, but Nafumi tells her that they need to think before they act and hatches an excellent plan. That night, they go out near the Fat Lord's mansion and hide inside of the forest, trying to scout the area when they notice that all of the demi-human population that belong to the region where the nerd rules are revolting against the Fat Lord as they assemble in front of his gates with pitchforks, demanding that their lord be given back to them. Nafumi decides to take advantage of this situation and hops on Philo's back before telling her to scale the castle walls. They get inside and start running straight towards Fatty's mansion and they are stopped by the guards in the area. Raftalia immediately gets off and uses her sword to knock three of the guard out, as both Nafumi and Raftalia run inside, while Philo guards their backs, blowing away two of the soldiers that were following them. Philo later breaks the outer wall and gets inside as well, while Nafumi and Raftalia are attacked by two more guards. Raftalia takes care of one of them, while the other one attacks Nafumi, who simply blocks the attack with his shield and uses his magical snake shield to poison the guard, before telling him that only he has the antidote, which he will give if the guard tells him the location of Melty. The guard obviously obliges and Philo breaks through the wall and enter the room, where they crush a bunch of guards and spot Fatty near Metley. Nafumi hands the antidote to the guard, who immediately runs away while the Fatty takes Melty as his hostage, telling them to stay at their place or he will kill the girl. Nafumi, however, simply uses his air shield to create a wall between him and Melty before Philo runs in with a massive kick, knocking him down. Philo brings Melty towards them, while the Lord gets up once again as Raftalia start walking towards him, enraged beyond any measure. The Lord takes out a whip and starts whipping Raftalia, telling her that she is a filthy demi-human, but she is unaffected as she keeps walking towards him, before taking her sword out and snapping the whip into two pieces. 
The Lord falls over and starts begging for his life, while Raphtalia puts a sword at his neck, telling him that he never let the demi-humans live no matter how much they begged, so why should he let him live? Raphtali remembers that when the first wave arrived, their entire village was destroyed and what was left of them were enslaved by this fat piece of trash. She tells him that she knows how he keeps the slaves inside of the dungeons and how he tortures every single one of them to try and gain profit out of them, and for that she will never forgive him. The fat lord seems to be surprised and asks whether Rathalia is one of the slaves and she replies that she was also captured amongst all of the other people in her village and because of him she had to see all of them get tortured to death. She raises her sword once more to kill him but stops as he starts begging for his life while now Fuma calls her from behind and tells her that killing this man won't bring her closure. She puts her sword down agreeing with Naofumi, claiming that if she killed this man, she would be exactly like him. The fatty takes advantage of this momentary distraction and immediately takes his sword out, before trying to strike Rathalia. She however was ready for it and immediately blocks his attack, but the fat piece of garbage ended up squeezing her injured arm, forcing her to drop her sword. He tries to attack her but she dodges and uses her astral sword to stab him in the chest. He kicks her away and backs off, slipping on his own whip, and ends up falling out of the window to his death. Nafumi immediately runs up to her and tells her that this wasn't her fault and makes sure that she's okay, before the nerd enters the room and asks if they all are okay. Melty immediately runs towards him and checks up on his before using her healing magic on her. The nerd tells them that they should move outside of this area as soon as possible, and they all scurry outside but before they leave, they have another job to take care of. Raphtalia stands in front of the entrance of the dungeon and goes inside before taking in a deep breath. They walk past several jail cells, lined with torture equipments which reminds her of the time when she used to get tortured here alongside her best friend, before she was sold into slavery. They walk past a lot of cells, when they suddenly find a couple of demi-humans still alive inside of the cells. One of the demi-human turns out to be a village friend named Keel, who knows Raphtalia, as she quickly goes over to him and releases him from his shackles. He looks at her and immediately gets scared, telling him to back off, but Raphtalia tells him who she is, which makes him extremely happy. She tells him that she has brought the shield hero with her, and Nafumi immediately walks over to him and uses his healing magic to heal all of his wounds. Raphtalia then happily asks him whether her best friend is still in the same cell, but Kiel stays silent. Raphtalia gets up and moves towards the cell that she was a prisoner in alongside her best friend and screams in horror as she finds the skeleton of her now deceased friend rotting on the ground. She starts crying at her own weakness and inability to save her friends, but Kiel tells her that she saved him and a couple of more children from this dungeon today. She however replies that she is no better than the fat lord as she is also a killer who killed him, just because she was angry. Now Fumi goes up to her and hugs her, telling her that it's not her fault and whatever happened was an accident. He reassures her that everything will be alright, and then they all move outside of the dungeon. Before they could do anything, they noticed that the fat lord was somehow still alive, and he kneels down in front of a stone pillar, before taking out his church pin and starts chanting so spells. The pillar starts glowing and suddenly a huge dinosaur erupts from it, screaming at the top of its lungs, before crushing the fat man to death and turning its attention towards Naofumi. The monster starts wreaking hammock everywhere, destroying the buildings and trying to kill as many people as it wants, before it starts charging at Naofumi, who runs alongside the others, dodging the attacks and hides behind a building, planning about what to do now. Suddenly, however, the monster bursts through the nearby building ready to attack them, when suddenly, Philo gets terribly mad and rushes towards the monster even though now Fumi tells her not to. She jumps in the air and hits him straight in the face before running up a building and turning around for another round. Melty tells now Fumi that they can't have this fight over here because a lot of innocents will get hurt, and she also points out that both Philo's and the monster's bellies are glowing pink, which means that the monster is after Philo and not him. Philo goes in for an attack again, while now Fumi tells the nerd to take the demi-human children and run while he calls Philo, and they get on her, to start running away from the city center. As expected, the monster starts following them, as she jumps from building to building, while the monster destroys everything in its path to follow her. They finally escape the city, while the monster breaks through the front gates, as they enter the forest and start running at full speed, while the monster breaks through every tree in its path to catch them. Reminds me of that Jurassic Park scene. Anyways, they finally reach a clearing near a lake and now Fubi tells Philo to stop, as this is the perfect location to have a fight. He gets off and gets his shield ready, while making sure that everyone was ready for what was about to come. The monster breaks through the trees and enters the clearing, running straight up at Naofumi, who immediately uses his airstrike shield to block its attack. 
This trick of his fails to work, however, as the monster is too strong and bursts through his shield and would have killed him if not for Philo, who charges at him and attacks him at the last moment. She backs off once again and rushes in for another attack, this time on the monster's chest. Melty decides to tag in as well and uses his water-based magic to attack the monster, but it doesn't seem to do anything to it. Raftalia also gets in the fray and runs up to the monster before using her sword to slash at its legs, but finds out that they are too hard for her sword to pierce through. Philo is the only one who seems to be making any progress, as she jumps up and hits him in the face again, before Nafumi creates an air shield behind her to give her another boost, which she uses to jump up even higher. And with the help of the second shield that he put up in the sky, she is able to land a massive hit on the monster, but it's not enough. Raftalia runs in for an attack, while the monster uses its feet to create a massive attack, which sends the rocks inside of the soil flying at Raftalia, but she's a nimble girl and easily dodges them all. However, the same can't be said about Naofumi, who gets hit by the demon's tail and is thrown back, even though he used an air shield to defend himself. He gets up once again and decides to use the rage shield as he doesn't have unlimited stamina, but someone in his mind tells him to stop, and even Melty points out that something seems to be amiss as the entire area gets covered by mist. Melty claims that this is a magical shield, which is a very high-level magic, especially considering how huge the radius is, and Raftalia claims that she can hear a bunch of footsteps coming from the jungle. Suddenly, a bunch of LGBT philolials enter the clearing through the forest and surround the monster, capturing him in a circle. Nafumu tries to use the rage shield once again, but it seems to have been blocked by the voice, who again tells Nafumi not to use that power. Suddenly, the lake behind them starts stirring, and a huge shadow forms from which a beautiful and huge philolial erupts and flies onto the land in front of Nafumi and the others. She looks at them and tells them to stand back before looking at the monster and demanding him to hand over the magic crystal that's inside of him. The monster, however, simply runs towards the giant philolial, who simply uses a kick to throw him back. For the first time ever, the monster seems to have gotten hurt, as he angrily shoots a massive flame blast at them. The giant Philolial immediately uses a shield which blocks off the flames while Nafumi uses his air shield to do the same. She then decides to end the entire match by using instant transmission as she suddenly appears behind the monster, and the monster is sliced to shreds as it falls over to the lake, bleeding. The giant Philolial then turns towards Nafumi and asks whether he is the shield hero. He tells her that he is the only one with a shield so she can't stop asking such dumb questions, and she apologizes before transforming into a beautiful girl with feathery wings on her back. She introduces herself as Fatoria, the Philolial Queen, and Melty immediately recognizes her name, claiming that she is legendary as she was raised by a hero centuries ago. Now, Fumi and his party introduce themselves as well before Fido tells them to get into a carriage, as this is not a place where they should stay for long. Now, Fumi, however, tells her to wait for a bit, as he needs a bit of the monster's tissue to unlock new forms in his shield, but Fido tells him that he shouldn't do that, as she can already sense a dangerous aura coming out from the shield, which she might not be able to control. Now, Fumi, however, tells her that he has it under control and takes some of the dragon tissue for getting the carriage. Fido uses her magic to immediately transport them to the ruins of an old city, which seems to be uninhabited for centuries now. Now, Fumi tells them to get some rest, but Philo seems to be hungry, so he decides to get some ingredients and cooks a hearty meal for themselves. While eating, however, he notices that all the other Philolials are looking at him, wanting some food as well, so he tells them to get a bunch of dishes and ingredients and cooks them food as well, which they immediately gobble up before going into a deep sleep. Nafumi looks at the KFC farm thinking of how much money he can earn in America, when Fido arrives behind him and tells him that they should have a talk. They go for a walk, where she tells him that she wasn't there to fight the monster and only came because she heard that her underlings have found a suitable candidate for the title of the next Philolial Queen, and that's the only reason she came. He asks her why Philo is growing differently from other Philolials, and she replies that any Philolial that is raised by a hero has capabilities of becoming the next Philolial Queen, and because he has been raising her since the first time she hatched from her egg, she already is super strong even though she is very young. She asks him to tell him everything that has been happening, and once he tells her everything, she seems to be disappointed, claiming that the four heroes are supposed to kill the enemy waves and not squabble amongst themselves. Now Fuma replies that he has nothing to do with it, as he is the one being incarcerated, but she replies that it doesn't matter as people are still dying because of them fighting. She tells him that their kingdom has already made a huge mistake, as they were not supposed to summon all four heroes, as each kingdom should get one hero to defend their people, but the new king ended up calling all four heroes for himself. She tells them that she doesn't give a shit about humans, 
but she promised the hero who raised her that she will make sure to protect the world. She tells him, however, that if the four heroes keep fighting amongst themselves, then the world is done for. She looks at him and tells him to make up with the rest of the heroes and save the world from ending, but Nafumi replies that he has already tried and doesn't think that the four heroes can work together. Fido, however, gets up angry and tells him with anger in her eyes that if the four heroes don't pull their act together to save the world, she will kill all four of them so that they can summon new heroes. The next morning, they all sit down to have breakfast with the philolials surrounding them when suddenly Fido walks up to the table and while Melty tells her to have a seat and get something to eat, she simply looks at her and uses her magic to encapsulate her in an air prison. And when Melty tries to touch it, she gets a cut on her fingers. Fido then takes Melty to a higher point and tells Nafumi once again that he needs to make up with the other heroes and help save the world, but Nafumi refuses, claiming that he has already died several times and that he is not going to be blamed for something he never did once again. Fido looks at him and tells him that it is his duty to reunite all the four heroes as only they can help protect the people in this world, but he straight up refuses, telling her that he doesn't harbor much love for the people on this planet either, as all they have ever done is blame him for crimes he never committed. She looks at him in anger and replies that if that's what his decision is, then she's going to kill him and the rest of the four heroes as well, so they can get new ones and now Fumi simply takes out his shield and tells her that she can try killing him but he isn't going without a fight. He tries to use his raised shield, but again, Fido ends up blocking it, and tells him that if he isn't going to make up with the rest of the heroes, then it means that he is confident in the abilities of his team to single-handedly defend the world, and she's going to check that. Nafumi gets ready for a fight, but she tells him that she already knows how strong he is, and wants to fight against Philo. She tells him that she will have a one versus one fight against Philo, and if she's able to defeat her, she will let the heroes live for a little longer, and see whether they can win against the waves, but if she loses, the heroes will be killed. Philo gets fired up and asks her whether she will also release Melty if she defeats her, and Fido agrees. She tells Philo that they will fight in their human form and won't be aided by any other person. Philo immediately gets out of her gloves and is ready for a fight as Fido descends in front of her and creates a magical dome around them to prevent anyone from interfering. The fight starts and Philo immediately goes on the offensive, jumping up in the air before trying to kick Fido, but to her surprise, Fido elegantly moves out of the way, easily dodging her attack before throwing her up in the air. Philo tries to regain her balance and uses her wings to fly and looks down at Fido to begin another attack, but is shocked to see that there is new one there. Suddenly, Raftalia screams at her to look behind, but before she can see, Fido ends up hitting her on the back as she is sent flying at the ground landing with a crash. She gets up once again all bruised and battered up and decides to run up again, but Nafumi tells her to stop running blindly and to use her brain instead. She stops for a second and uses a magic attack that creates a massive tornado aimed at Fito, but the Felolio Queen is the queen for a reason, and she immediately uses her nullifying magic to get rid of her magic attack, throwing Philo away, before rushing up to her and punching her against the rocks. You slay queen. Nafumi decides to try and free Melty from her cage and sneaks up to her, while Philo lays on the ground battered up. He tells Melty that he is going to use his shield to free her, but Fido notices him and sends a magic blast his way, which blows him against the wall, even though he blocked it with his shield. Philo looks at Nafumi and asks him whether he is okay, but Fido uses that opportunity to bitch slap her once again. She starts trash talking her, claiming that Nafumi got hurt just because he tried to save Melty, because she is weak and can't save Melty herself. A teary eyed Philo runs up to her in anger, but Fido dodges her pathetic attempt at a punch and tells her that she wasn't able to defeat the monster yesterday, so how will she ever be useful to the shield hero? before bitch slapping her to the ground once again. Philo feels awful about her weakness as she stands there panting heavily, but Nafumi screams at her that he is fine and that he believes in her, so she should smoke this Philolio queen right here and now. This gives her a boosted inspiration as she charges up for an attack and jumps in the air before rushing towards Fido. Fido simply uses his shield to block her attack, but Philo keeps pushing and uses a new magic attack in the form of a very powerful golden claw which she uses to pierce through the barrier and ends up scratching Fido on the cheek before falling down. Fido is surprised by her determination and strength as she was able to scratch her, and even then she gets up and walks towards Fido, before trying to punch her once again on the shoulder but collapses down out of exhaustion. Fido looks at her with a smile and tells her that the match is over and the Philo is the one who is victorious for even landing a scratch on her. With that, she free Melty, who runs up to her and hugs Philo, followed by Raftalia and now Fumi, who also congratulate her on the amazing show of tenacity against the Philolio Queen. 
She heals Philo completely before telling her that she has successfully overcome her trial and takes out a tire out of her ass before telling Philo to kneel in front of her. She then places the tire on Philo's head, claiming that she will be the successor to Fido and going to be the next Philolio queen. The tire disappears and a strand of hair appears at that position, which Philo doesn't like, so she tries to take it out, but another one immediately grows. Fido tells her to get used to that, as it signifies her status as the next queen. Now Fuma checks her stats and realizes that she has grown up in her stats and has gotten much stronger. She then moves towards Nafumi and gives him one of his hair strands, which immediately unlocks a lot of more shield features, which he is thankful about. She turns towards Melty, who tells her that she really wanted to have a ride on a Philolio queen ever since she was young and Fido obliges, taking her for a ride around the forest. Afterwards, they have a huge celebration in which they crown Philo as the successor to the Philolio Queen, dance and eat their way into a dreamless sleep. Nafume, however, is not feeling sleepy and heads over to look at the moon when he is approached by the Philolio Queen, who initiates a conversation with him. She tells him that he must talk to the other heroes, but instead of enforcing her will upon him like my ex-girlfriend, she starts talking to him about his feelings like my psychologist. She asks Nafumi whether he even tried to clear out his name, but he replies that he didn't and Fido makes a really good point, telling him that this makes him look even more guilty. Nafumi finally gives in and tells her that he will try to talk to other heroes and make them unite so that they can defeat the next waves, but he can't really promise anything. She looks at him with a smile and tells him that she will be expecting great things from him as he is the one who brought up the new Philolio queen, and any man that can do that is a really nice man. She then tells him that she was serious, and if the heroes can't defeat the next wave, she will kill them all. He asks her whether the next wave will really be that difficult, and she replies that it will be. He tells her that he will have to use his rage shield more often then, but she looks at him worriedly, but takes a deep sigh and uses her magic on his armor. She tells him that she has boosted his armor, so that the rage shield will affect him less, but still is very dangerous, and he should only use it when absolutely necessary. With that, he thanks her, and she lays down in his lap one last time as she tells him that she was even raised by a shield hero. Fido takes them to a new location by instantly transporting them alongside a new carriage, and tells Nafumi that they are near a hero and that he should go up to him and talk to him once, so that they can all fight together instead of fighting amongst themselves. Nafumi doesn't really reply as they all get on the carriage, while Philo drags them away happily. They reach a nearby land, which seems to be pretty fortified, as they look down upon it from the hills. He looks at the map, and thinks to himself that he can simply go around the area sneakily and avoid any confrontation, but remembers Fido's words, so decides that they will go straight up to the gate, and talk to whichever hero is in command here. Even Melty agrees to this surprisingly even though she was the one who was telling him to avoid any confrontation at all cost. They finally start riding straight up to the case, when the guards notice them and immediately call over the hero in charge. The hero turns out to be none other than the idiot spear hero, which is the worst hero Nafuin could have asked for, as he has one ball and zero brains. He stands in front of them with a small battalion of troops, while Nafumi starts getting second thoughts about talking to this idiot, but decides that it is too late to turn away now, so walks up to him before telling him that he is here to talk. Motoyasu, the spear hero however, seems to be acting different, as he looks at him with deep-rooted anger, and tells him that he has nothing to talk about and tries to stab Nafumi, who immediately blocks the attack with his shield. Raphthalia immediately gets ready for a fight, but Nafumi stops her, telling her to stand down. Motobiasu looks at him with disgust and tells him that he is a despicable creature for brainwashing these women to be with him, and uses a thunderous spear thrust, which Nafumi blocks but is knocked back a little bit. He tells Motoyasu that he is here to talk and not to fight, but Motoyasu is a lost cause as he doesn't listen to him, and immediately uses another massive attack at Nafumi that he uses his entire strength to block, and even Philo is forced to use an air shield to protect herself and the others. Nafumi shouts at him to slow the hell down, and asks him why he is so triggered. This angers Motoyasu even more as he blames Nafumi for the death of Ren and Itsuki, the sword and the bow hero. Nafumi replies by saying, did I kill him too? I've been a very busy man. Mutueyasu gets even more triggered and tries to hit him with his spear once again, but now Fumi obviously blocks the attack once more before pushing him back, but Motoyasu comes in with another attack, which is blocked, but before Nafumi can say anything else, Mutueyasu attacks him once again, nearly killing him by stabbing him in the head. This makes him realize that Motoyasu is extremely serious and is fighting to kill him right now. They get into another clash as they both fall back once again as Melty tells Motoyasu to stop and tells him that Nafume has done no such things. This makes Motoyasu even angrier 
and he starts trash-talking Naofumi again and calling him a swine for taking control of a princess. Suddenly, the biggest bitch in this world arrives from behind Omoto Iyasu and starts spewing nonsense about how the shield hero is a devil, and how he killed both the other heroes to get back Omoto Iyasu and the kingdom. Malti immediately uses her magic to create an electric cage around them, which is completely impregnable, but a wise man once said, It's impregnable. Naofumi tells him once again to think with his own mind, but Omoto Iyasu is dumber than a rock, and attacks him nonetheless. Naofumi pushes him back after blocking with a shield and then uses his shield prison to capture him. Motoyasu, however, has grown in strength as well and immediately breaks through it, surprising Naofumi. Philo decides to tag in, but Malti immediately tells her to back off, before using her magic to create a giant fireball in the sky, which she fires at them. But Melty immediately uses a water shield which absorbs the fire and protects them from any harm. This gives Phila the opening that she was looking for, as she jumps in at Motoyasu, trying to attack him with her claws, but is pushed back. She goes in for an aerial attack once again, but one of Motoyasu's team member uses an air magic at her, which she is able to dodge by changing back into the human form and dodges Motoyasu's attack as well, before jumping in once again at him with her golden claws and delivering a three-strike combo, hurting Motoyasu a bit, even though he blocked them. He tells Philo that he really likes her, but if she can't get out of Nafumi's control, he might have to hurt her as well, and with that, he rushes in for a thrust, which is easily blocked by Naofumi, who pushes him back, injuring him. Motoyasu uses a special attack, causing a magic blast from above, which he again blocks before Motoyasu uses a series of spear strikes, which is also blocked by the Shiwa hero. Finally, Motoyasu decides to use a combo, and uses his teammate's magic abilities of fire and air to combine with his spear, and shoots it at Naofumi, who uses his full strength to try and block the attack. Raftalia tries to help him, but one of Motoyasu's team members immediately fires an air shot her, which is blocked by Melty's water magic, and it also nullifies their combo magic. Naofumi looks at Raftalia and realizes that even they can create a combo like that, and she agrees with it. Motoyasu warns Raftalia that he won't hold back and will hurt her if it comes to that, but she isn't afraid, and runs up to him with her sword drawn. She jumps up for an attack but disappears when suddenly a ghost-like shield appears in front of her and gobbles Motoyasu up. The shield sucks Motoyasu's power, which angers him as he runs towards Naofumi for a thrust, but he easily sidesteps and grabs his spear before Philo kicks him away. Taking advantage of this distraction, Braftalia sneaks up on Malti and slices her with her astral sword, draining her of magic. The entire team of Motoyasu is tired and on their knees now, so Melty and Philo decide to finish them off by using their combined abilities. Melty uses her water magic, while Philo uses her air magic, creating a typhoon which floods Motoyasu's team, defeating them completely. Motoyasu, however, gets up once again, claiming that no matter how many times he falls down, he will get up to fight Naofumi, but in the middle of his bullshit, Raftalia senses something to be wrong. Philo senses it as well as she quickly kicks Malti and the other two girls on top of Motoyasu before appearing behind Naofumi again. Raftalia notices that all of the soldiers that were present a moment ago have disappeared, leaving them alone, but Philo interrupts her thoughts by screaming at Naofumi to use his rage shield and create as many protective shields over themselves as possible. This confuses him, but she tells him to do as she says as something bad is going to happen, and she can feel it. He immediately switches to his rage shield and creates a shield prison around themselves. This, however, isn't enough as she tells Naofumi to use more air shields above that, so he immediately activates two more air shields, and then waits. Suddenly, from the sky, a giant beam of energy falls upon them, breaking through both of the air shields and even breaking through the shield prison, leaving only Naofumi to protect everyone from this disaster. Naofumi uses his entire energy to try and hold the beam off, and is successful in preventing them from dying, saving every one of them, as the beam leaves a giant crater around them. He falls to his knees out of exhaustion when suddenly a clapping noise is heard, and they turn around to see that the Pope of the Church is there, as he congratulates Naofumi on surviving that attack, as according to him, both the sword hero and the bow hero failed to do so. Motoriyasu looks at him in disbelief, asking him whether the church was responsible for the murder of the two heroes, and the Pope affirms his allegations. Malti screams at the Pope, telling him that he could have hurt her, and the spirit hero, but he replies that she is a cunning woman who ordered the church to put all the blame on the shield hero, so that's what they would do. They will kill all of them, and then put the blame on the shield hero. Naofuma asks him why he is doing that, and the Pope replies that ever since the heroes arrived in this world, they have only created problems for them, so they would rather destroy the heroes alongside the royal family and rule themselves. With that, he takes out a golden sword and points it at them, 
while Nelty tell him to beware of that sword. The Pope aims the sword at them and blasts a powerful beam at them, which Naofumi uses his shield to block completely. The Pope commends him on his strength, before changing the sword into a spear to the shock of everyone. Melty tells them that the weapon in the Pope's hand is the replica of all the cardinal weapons, and is a very strong device which was hidden for centuries. The spear hero gets up and starts spouting some righteous nonsense which annoys everyone around, while Melty tells them that the weapon is taking a lot of mana, which is being taken out of the followers that are behind him. Motoyasu uses his spear immediately without thinking and fires a blast at the Pope, which obviously has no effect on him as he has a barrier around him. Motoyasu then turns towards Naofume and tells him that they need to work together before using the combo skill of the air magic and Malti's fire magic to fire a blast at the Pope. But as the dust settles, it is revealed that there was no effect on the Pope whatsoever. Motoyasu tries one last attack and throws a massive beam of energy at the Pope, which is yet again blocked by the magical barrier. And after that, the Pope walks forward and tells them that now it's his chance to attack and uses the single slash of his spear to create fire all around the party. The Pope laughs at them and tells them that he can kill them whenever he wants and now Fumi realizes that he is correct as he doesn't have enough energy to block another full power attack. Montoyasu cries about how the Pope is cheating, while the Pope readies himself for another attack. Thankfully, however, a bunch of very strong magic attacks flies towards the Pope, which he tries to block with his barrier, but is unable to do so as his barrier breaks and he gets hurt a bit. Now Fumi turns around and is shocked to see Itsuki and Ren both standing on the top still very much alive. They both come down inside of the crater, I don't know why, but Ren moves ahead and uses an energy sword attack once again, which the Pope blocks with his barrier, using a lot of his mana. Itsuki as well uses his bow to shoot some magical arrows, but the barrier is strong enough to defend against those as well. Motoyasu asks them how they are alive, and they reveal it after Naofumi gave them, he hint about the secret of the church, they started researching and investigating about it, when they were directed towards a closed mountain, and the church tried to kill them with a magical blast. The Queen's spies, however, reached them first and was able to inform them ahead of time, which saved their lives. The heroes apologized to Naofumi for all the fake allegations that they threw at him before Ren and Itsuki decide to go in for a combo. Ren runs up towards the Pope, dodging the firewall that he was creating, while Itsuki uses a very powerful magic blast that destroys all of the barriers, giving Ren the clear way to attack as their weapons clash. The Pope is knocked back down as his mana is being depleted, while Ren informs the Pope that the Queen's forces will be arriving soon, so they should surrender. Suddenly, all three of the heroes are acting buddy-buddy and now Fumi doesn't like it one bit. They all look towards him with a smiley face and tell him that now they can fight together, but he's having none of it and tells them to piss off. They seem to be shocked, even though they put him through so much trouble. So now Fumi informs them about the acts they committed, which landed him in so much trouble all the time. He tells them that he doesn't need them to survive in the least and that he and his team can handle themselves better than all three of them combined. The three heroes start bickering amongst themselves while the Pope renies a huge blast. Now Fumi immediately runs in the front and blocks the blast completely before telling the heroes that he's going to work with them this one time because he made a promise to the Philoleal Queen. But after that, he will be going on his own way once again. All of them get ready for a massive battle, but the Pope simply laughs as he creates a reddish colored ball in the sky which creates a dome structure around them, capturing them inside. He calls it his cathedral and tells them that they cannot escape this place no matter how hard they tried, while a pit forms in Naofumi's stomach as he realizes that this might be the end of them all.